Hello everyone, welcome to our beginner friendly tutorials on algorithm. Whether you are just starting your journey in programming or looking to strengthen your foundational knowledge, this video is perfect for you. In this comprehensive guide, we will break down the fundamental concepts of algorithm in a clear, approachable manner. Throughout this tutorial, you will learn what exactly an algorithm is and why it's crucial in programming basic algorithm principles and how they are applied in solving real world problems. We shall talk about step-by-step -step explanations and examples to ensure a solid understanding even to those with no prior knowledge in coding. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more beginner-friendly programming tutorials and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Let's dive into the exciting world of algorithms together. An algorithm can be defined as a sequence of instruction specifying the steps required to accomplish some task. As we said from the beginning, once you begin to write your program, there are some steps that you need to follow. From the previous video, we talked about you being able to define a problem, outlining your solution, Developing an outline to an algorithm. Testing the algorithm for correctness. Before you start coding the algorithm into a specific programming language, you then run the program on a computer. And then, if it works as expected, you document and maintain the program. You see that these are the seven steps that you need to follow when programming a software. In this video, we will talk about how to solve a problem. Whenever you are given a problem to solve, how do you tackle it? First, we just do it just because we know it, right? We can also guess and be lucky. That's also another way of solving a problem. Or sometimes we can even do try and error. Sometimes we rely on experiences if we have done it before. And then there is another approach which we call the scientific approach. What is the scientific way of solving a problem? Whenever you have a problem, you first analyze your problem. After analyzing the problem, you come up with what we call the problem specification. After coming up with the problem specification, you now go ahead and design a solution to your problem. This is where your algorithm comes in. As part of designing the solution for your problem, you specify instructions that one needs to follow in order to solve the problem. After designing your algorithm, you now implement the algorithm that you have designed in code. After implementing your algorithm in code, you execute it, you compile it and execute it on a computer. And then, if everything is working as expected, you go ahead and then maintain and document your solution. One thing you should note is that developing a software is not a straight line. It is an iterative process. What this means is that you may go through one or more of these phases more than once. Once you design your solution and you realize that it is not working as expected, there's nothing wrong with going back and redesigning the solution. It happens to even the most experienced programmers. And so when it happens to you, do you not be worried? This is something that everybody does. Now, let us come back to the definition of an algorithm. We have said that an algorithm is a sequence of instruction describing how a task can be done. The, ens the emphasis is on sequence of instruction as opposed to actually executing the instruction. You understand? So writing your algorithm is not executing the instruction, but describing how the task should be done. Let us look at some examples. A cooking recipe, instructions for assembling a model, rules on how to play a game, directions on driving from A to B. All of these are sets of instructions that you can give to somebody to follow in order to complete a task. We can pick a typical cooking recipe and then you see that 
there are step-by-step -step instructions on how this recipe can be followed to cook a specific meal. Now, let us look at how our algorithms are translated into a program. Once you have a problem, that problem, you think about it, you develop how that problem should be solved. And then once you've been able to adequately articulate how this problem should be solved, you now go ahead and then use any high level language of your choice to record or to type out the code. Let us talk about components of an algorithm. An algorithm can consist of variables and values, instructions or sequence of instructions, procedures involving instructions, selections between instructions. So you can have more than one set of instructions and you need to select in between them you use what we call selection sometimes you also need to repeat some set of instructions a number of times and then you after everything you also document what you have done so these are the various components of an algorithm variables and values instructions sequence procedure selection repetition and documentation what do they mean and what are they let us pick them one after the other and see when we talk about instructions we are talking about just simple actions simple actions that are unambiguous it doesn't need to confuse the compiler when you are giving simple instruction there should be instructions that the system should also know about and after the system knowing about it it should be something that the system can actually do. You do not give instructions that the system cannot do. For instance, if you tell the compiler to carry a table, how do you expect the compiler to carry a table? But then if you tell the compiler to add two numbers, the compiler should be able to add two numbers. And so and if you want to look at some very simple instructions, we can look at instructions like take off shoes count 10 cut along the dotted line knit one pearl two shift 10. all of these are very simple instructions but they are very specific and they are very direct now let us look at some differences between instructions that are issued if we give an instruction like chop chop is an instruction that we can give when we want to chop something like onion carrots or broccoli but then if you have items such as teddy bear wine how do you expect to be able to chop so you see that whenever you are giving your instructions these instructions should be one that can be carried out when writing algorithms make each instruction very simple and unambiguous what do we mean by simple and unambiguous? Let us look at an example. If I want somebody to fry some chicken for me, I can go ahead and write, cut chicken into pieces, brown all pieces, brown the pieces on all sides in a casserole dish, in hot olive oil. But you see that this is very long and a very complex instruction. Instead of writing such instruction, you could break the instruction down into very simple, very precise set of instructions. Like, cut chicken into pieces, heat olive oil in casserole dish, brown the chicken pieces in the casserole dish. So you see that the second set of instruction is the preferred one. All that we are talking about is that, in summary, your algorithm should be lucid, precise, unambiguous, Give the correct solution in all cases, and eventually your algorithm should have an end. How do we define a solution algorithm? Most tasks are very challenging in life, right? Most of the time, when you are writing an algorithm for a program, you would need to work on it more than once. 
you most often have to write the initial solution and then alter it along the way to get the desired results. These are some points to be considered when writing a solution algorithm. When developing your algorithm, you need to break your problem into three separate components. The first one is the inputs. Those are the list of data that are provided to your problem. The input, in other words, is what does your solution need from the user in order to be able to work properly. So if you are designing a software, you ask yourself the simple question, what does my software need from the user in order to be able to produce the solution? That is your input. Your output is what is your software expected to give out after it has finished working. And then the third part is the steps for processing. What steps do I need to go through to convert what I have been given by the user to what the user needs at the end of the day? Let's just, let us take a typical real world example and see how to break things down into these three different components. Our first example is a program is required to read three numbers, add them together and print their total. Like we said, we'll first need to define our problem. Whenever you are given a problem, you first need to draw your solution definition table. The definition table will have three columns. The first column is what will record the inputs. The second column is what will record the steps that you need to follow in order to convert your input into what will be in the third column. The third column is your output. Like I said, the input would always describe what your software needs in order to be able to function. And your output will be what your, your software is expected to give out at the end of its processing cycle. So in our problem, we were asked to design a program that requires three numbers, add them together, and then print out the total. In this, we would realize that our software requires three numbers. So we will represent those three numbers with number one, number two, and number three. And then at the end of the day, our software is supposed to give out a number. We will represent that with total. Now, let us look at how to identify what exactly you've been asked to do, the steps that you've been asked to process. You, you can normally find this out by identifying the verbs in the problem that you've been given. So if you look at the problem critically, you would see that a program is required to read. Read is a verb. Three numbers, add them. Add is a verb and print their total. So print is also a verb. So you see that the three verbs that you can identify in this problem is read, add, and print. And if you look at it critically, this is exactly what you have been asked to do. So now let us update our definition table. We are going to have something like this. So the input is number one, number two, and number three. The output is total. The processing now becomes read three numbers, add numbers together, print total number. And so with this, we can conveniently write our solution as read three numbers, add numbers together, print total. So you see that these are very simple instructions that if one follows, should be able to add three numbers. In our second example, the problem reads, a program is required to prompt the terminal operator for maximum and minimum temperature readings. On a particular day, accept those readings as integers and calculate and display to the screen the average temperature calculated by 
maximum temperature plus minimum temperature all divided by two. How do we tackle this? You can pause the video and try it on your own. So, if we look at this, let us first identify our input and then our output. From the question, we can see that our input would be what maximum and minimum temperature readings and our output would be average temperature. And so by this, our definition table will look like this. So we have maximum temperature, minimum temperature as input and then average temperature. Now let's go another step and see what are the processing steps. Like I told you earlier, always look out for the verbs in the question. So by identifying the verbs, this is what we see. We've been asked to prompt. After prompting, we've been asked to accept. After accepting, we've been asked to calculate. And then after calculating, we are asked to display. So now let us go ahead and then update our solution table. So this is how our definition solution table would look like. The inputs will be maximum and minimum temperatures. The output will be average temperature. And the processing steps would be prompt for temperatures, get temperature, calculate average temperature, and then display average temperature. So you see that what we have at the processing column of our table would become our algorithm. If you have any questions, if you don't understand any section, please feel free to put it in the comments below. I'll do well to respond to your questions. Now, if everything is very clear and we understand, why don't we try our hands on this problem? So take some time, try your hands on this problem. Again, if you want more novice friendly lecture like this, please feel free to subscribe to our channel and then click on the bell icon so that anytime we post a new video, you will be notified. Thank you for your time. Hope to see you another time.